Hi, YouTubers and wet chairs everywhere. It's ParkerGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? I've got something new. I've got something new, yes. Mmm. And that is really, really a nice cup of coffee. I was in my local Mark's grocery store yesterday and I picked up some of Seattle's best. This is their breakfast blend. I figure I'm, I'm kind of doing a tour of the world, so to speak. Uh, I've talked about coffee from Canada, Tim Hortons, uh, Boston, Cleveland, and now Seattle. I saw this on the shelf. I thought, sure, why not? Let's, uh, let's kind of hone in on the cities that have coffees that are famous for coffee. And of course, Seattle's very, very famous for coffee. So this is Seattle's best. This is their breakfast blend. It's described as vibrant and crisp. And yes, it is. It's a medium roast. And uh, they call it, they say that it's smooth roasted. It really is. It's a smooth cup of coffee, very vibrant, very crisp, very accurate description. I enjoy it a lot. Seattle's best. Um, I'm going to enjoy that quite a bit. Very, very good. And of course, I'm using my uh, Ohio coffee mug right there for my niece Kelly. So, yeah, <laughs> great way to start the morning. Speaking of coffee, uh, viewer Ron Wright uh, happened to uh, uh, write me uh, or post a message in the last Monday morning mailbag where he said, uh, Happy Labor Day. I own a coffee shop and I do Franken blends often. Last Monday morning mailbag, I did a Franken blend. I mixed a couple of different coffees and uh, it came out pretty good. Again, he says, I own a coffee shop and I do Franken blends often. I did one just two weeks ago and it went over really well. Sometimes it works better than hoped for. And I, I messaged him back and I said, where's your coffee shop? I'll, 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 I'll give you a shout out in the Monday morning mailbag. And he said, thanks, Mark. The shop is Backhouse Cafe Coffee and Tea. The webpage is backhousecafe.com. We have an active Facebook page too. Love what you're doing for the Wet Shave community. Well, thank you very much. The address also is 901 West 4th Street, Williamsport, PA 17701. So if you're in that neck of the woods, stop in and have a cup of coffee and say hi to Ron. So that's really, really great. So uh, very, very happy to do that, Ron. Uh, and really, it's, uh, it's great to, uh, to hear from a viewer who has a coffee shop. That's, that's really, really wonderful. Also, another order of business is the shave I had recently with a brand new shave soap and scent from Phoenix Shaving. This uh, Diver Down, this is based on C4 uh, spiced uh, scent. Boy, oh boy, was this really, really wonderful. This is a great scent. The scent hasn't been experienced in over 50 years and Doug and Friend brought it back and boy, this is a phenomenal. Phenomenal scent. It has hints of uh, bay rum, myrrh, a little bit of cinnamon in there. It's all blended to really make a really great classic masculine scent. I've already had three shaves with it and I absolutely love this. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And of course the review uh, aired yesterday, which is Sunday. And uh, also uh, I experienced their aftershave splash in Cologne and the uh, Seaforth Spiced Scent or their Diver Down scent, uh, their brand name. And uh, you know what, go easy on this because I put a little too much in the palm of my hand. I made the mistake of pouring it in like this, uh, like I do all the um, aftershaves that I get from the big box stores, you know, like the Aqua Velvas and the Skin Bracers, those kinds of things. And those, those tend to, I, I tend to put a little more in my hand because they're not as potent. You know, you don't, they, they're not as, they don't have as strong a scent in the bottle uh, and they're really not as long lasting either. And that's, you know, neither here nor there, depending on what, what you want in your shave, your, in your post shave routine. If you want uh, a, an aftershave that lasts a little longer, if you want something that doesn't last as long, I mean, it's entirely up to you. But I find that I just, out of habit, I pour a little more in my hand and that's what I did with this. Rather than use the vacuum method, that Doug has talked about where when you take the cap off, you just put this on the palm of your hand and you, it creates a vacuum there and you lift it up and it just dispenses the right amount in the palm of your hand and you use that and slap it on. Well, I poured it like this and boy, it's got a kick. It's got a great brace. It's got a great scent. 
but you know you don't need a lot just so you know and it really is it's an aftershave and cologne and it really is uh, a longer lasting scent and it's wonderful so I just wanted to mention that to you and kind of clear that up as well um, because the review you know <laughs> I use a little too much but I've used it for a head shave that's going to be coming up this week and I also used it uh, in a shave this morning uh, with my uh, Vikings Blade Chieftain Razor. Love this razor. Used, uh, used the King C. Gillette razor blade in here. And uh, boy, uh, this razor and this soap gave me an absolutely, absolutely beautiful uh, BBS shave this morning. A really, really, just a, just a great, great shave. I mean, uh, really get some of this because this is, this is something that uh, uh, our fathers and grandfathers probably experienced you know, years and years and years ago when they were doing the traditional wet shave. So it's great that uh, Doug and Fran brought this to the wet shaving community. So just wanted to mention that. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Let's get some of these questions. Oh, hey, time to up, uh, time to open up, <laughs> time to open up the vault of ancient archive questions right now. Yeah, I like that. I'm excited. <laughs> stumbling over the words. I'm really excited. I like that a lot. I love that effect. Absolutely love it. And you know, I usually hold a piece of paper here. Originally, I thought that when I did this, I would have the question written out here, but I decided I'll just grab the questions from the screen. Uh, but uh, I have to have something to show the transition. So uh, again, this is more cartoon work that, I, that I've done for my feature double take. And actually, this is one feature, and this is one feature. And what I do is I scan it in, and then I take this panel, and I duplicate it, and then I make my changes digitally. Uh, you know, it's a comparison feature, you know. Compare the two drawings, the one on the top and the one on the bottom, and find the differences. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm not only drawing traditionally, I'm also uh, doing it digitally. Uh, and uh, that's been a lot of fun, so I just wanted to show you that that's... That's what I have in my head. Okay. Well, this is the uh, discussion we had on uh, witch hazel. And uh, I had several questions about witch hazel, and I brought those up. And we had some great, great responses to that. And um, I just wanted to um, share with you some of the responses that we had because they've been very, very informative. Uh, as far as post shave routine using witch hazel or uh, using uh, an alum block, that sort of thing. And uh, I mentioned that I had read online where some wet shavers use everything across the board. They'll use an alum block followed by witch hazel, followed by an aftershave, a splash, followed by an aftershave balm. And I've also done this this week and uh, that was great. It really worked out very, very well. Uh, Just Uncle L wrote here, um, Great Monday morning nail bag again with Mark. Hey, thank you very much. He goes on to talk about his collection of soaps and creams. I have quite a collection of soaps and creams. Over 40 soaps and about 15 creams. I also know other shavers with a lot more than that. A large part of my collection is dedicated to Australian artisans, about 50%. Uh, and then he talks about uh, the actual length of YouTube videos and his watching habits. I might as well mention that to you also. You can... You can also uh, update uh, your responses on that. Uh, are my YouTube videos too long, too short? Uh, what do you say about other YouTube videos out there? Do you like longer ones, do you like shorter ones, that sort of thing. I watch my YouTube videos mostly, at least 80% of each video, but I do pick and choose which ones I watch. As for my post shave, I use it all. Alum, witch hazel, an aftershave tonic, and a balm moisturizer. What a particular shaver may need for post shave, I feel is very skin dependent. So there needs to be a bit of trial and error. That's very, very true, Just Uncle L. I agree with you. Everyone's skin type and beard type is different. That's why you have to try these things to find the right combination that works for you. But part of the fun of doing the traditional wet shave is doing that experimentation. Finding the right razor, finding the, the, the right blade, or uh, several blades or a few different razors, uh, swapping out different soaps, you know, rotating them in and out, experiencing a different scent. I mean, if, if I didn't change my soaps out, 
uh, every day or every other day, I think, it, I think the shade would just get boring. It would be the same thing day in and day out. But because I have that variety, uh, it really makes it uh, a really uh, uplifting experience. Uh, you know, it's something to look forward to. Sometimes I'll lay it all out the night before. This is what I'm going to use in the morning. And I look forward to waking up, showering, and getting to that shave and starting my day. So that's, so that's, uh, that's part of the process. But here's another individual, Just Uncle L, who does everything across the board. Alum, Witch Hazel, Aftershave, and Balm. So thanks for confirming that, uh, Just Uncle L. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Carl Pennington wrote, I've gone to using American Crew Revitalizing Toner in my post-shave routine. This toner seems to be designed for shaving and it does contain alcohol. I also still use an alum block prior to using the American Crew Revitalizing Toner. Well, I'm going to link that uh, product below. I think I did take a look at it. And um, I have to take a look at it again to find out exactly what it is. But if it's something that works for you, great. And I'm glad you mentioned it because... It's something we could put out to other viewers, and if uh, for some reason the, uh, the witch hazel doesn't work for them, or they don't care for the scent, uh, or whatever the reason might be, this might be another option for many, many wet shavers out there. Uh, Bart Bartlett had a very, very informative comment. He wrote, another enjoyable Monday morning mailbag, an informative review of witch hazel. My research has shown that real witch hazel always contains about 14% alcohol because of the extraction process. When you look at the ingredients of the alcohol-free witch hazel products, witch hazel is always about third on the list. I've used both Dickinson's unscented with alcohol and Thayer's cucumber scented alcohol-free witch hazel. I think many witch hazel users prefer Thayer's because they don't like the scent of real witch hazel, which I've grown accustomed to. I've settled on using Dickinson's because of its antiseptic attributes. Those shavers using alcohol-based aftershave splashes probably get similar antiseptic benefits as provided by alum and witch hazel. As an aside, Dickinson's is also about one-third the cost of Thayer's. I'm also one of those wet shavers using alum, witch hazel, aftershave splash, and aftershave balm. So you'd probably say that's overkill. In fact, I enjoy the post-shave almost as much as the shave itself. Yes, uh, yeah, I, yes, I agree with that. I enjoy the post-shave as much as the actual shave too. And another viewer who, uh, another wet shaver who is doing it all across the board. Now, um, I've been using the Humphreys Witch Hazel and yeah, the scent, this is, this is just Witch Hazel and that 14% alcohol that's in there. And the scent is really nothing to write home about. It's just, meh, it's there. And uh, some wet shavers uh, become accustomed to it and others just don't like it, which is why they go to a, uh, a different witch hazel, a scented witch hazel from Thayer's, which I don't have. I know they have rose petal, they have cucumber, they have, I think, a lemon one also. I have to try that sometime. But um, not, not, a, not a bad scent. Uh, you know, for me personally, I can tolerate it. And I'm finding that this works really, really well for a post-shave, uh, in the post-shave routine for a head shave. After a head shave, I'm using the Witch Hazel and it is very cooling. It's uh, really, um, it's very calming, uh, that sort of thing. But it's not um, taking care of any nicks or cuts the way an alum block does. So what I'll do is, I will, if I'm doing a head shave, I'll do uh, an alum block run over that to knock down any irritation and then I'll put some of this on to just have that nice cooling effect, that nice calming effect and then follow up with a little bit of a splash and balm, that sort of thing after a head shave. I did that yesterday and it worked out, worked out pretty, pretty well. But yeah, the scent might not be in everyone's wheelhouse. I understand that. So thanks very much for that, Bart. I really do appreciate it. Uh, this is from Frank um, Miska, M-Y-S-K-A. I hope I, hope I pronounced that correctly, Frank. Hi, Mark. Just to let you know, Sterling has an extensive line of scented witch hazels with and without menthol. They are great. Hope this helps. I'll link to that. I was not aware of that. Sterling, great company. They got a lot of great shave soaps and other products up there for the wet shaving community. Uh, I got a new one I'm going to be reviewing too. Uh, you know, <laughs> I just got to get around to doing it. Should be coming up soon. 
But uh, yeah, uh, Sterling uh, makes a witch hazel product. So I will uh, definitely link to that below. Thanks very much for that, um, Frank. I really do appreciate it. Uh, viewer Samuel said, um, my logic on witch hazel versus alum is this. I don't have either yet. After you shave and wash off your face, use the hazel to ensure all soap is off your face. Then use alum if bleeding. Well, if that works for you, that's, that's great. Now, I hope you tried both of them, Samuel. Give them a try. Figure out which one to use first, that sort of thing. My routine is I'll take the alum block right after, right after my cold water splash and I dry my face off. I'll run that alum block under cold water. I run it around my face to uh, you know get that uh, get those minor minor micro nicks and cuts that might be there that you can't see, uh, knock down any irritation that may have occurred after a shave, that sort of thing. And then if I uh, decide to follow up uh, with some sort of splash, it'll be a witch hazel uh, or an aftershave splash, depending on what I'm doing. Mostly now my routine has changed to using witch hazel again uh, after a head shave. That seems to work out really well. I'm gonna probably look at maybe getting a scented witch hazel because if I'm putting it on my head, you know, I'd, I'd rather have um, a little bit of a nice scent emanating from there and not so much the actual original witch hazel scent. It really is not a very flattering scent at all. So that's the only reason why I'm gonna be looking at a scented uh, witch hazel. Uh, and you know, if I'm not using witch, witch hazel, I'll throw a little bit of splash up there and a little balm that, uh, that will cooperate with it, that won't clash, that sort of thing. So thanks very much for that, Samuel. I really do appreciate it. All right, let's get on to some other new questions now that we got the witch hazel stuff out of the way. Oh, wait a minute. Before I forget, I want to mention this to you because it concerns a post-shave routine. Now, I had a recent shave where I had what I thought were a couple of weepers that uh, they came about from for some reason. I don't know what razor I used or what happened. I don't know if there were insect bites or weepers, but whatever. Um, I was using the um, the Sierra razor. I recently reviews, reviewed this on my channel. This is from GlobalShave.club and Sheldon Quinn. This is a stainless, 100% stainless steel razor with a beautiful mirror polish finish. You saw me talk about this. I did two reviews. <laughs> One I did that. The base plate was upside down. Oh well, and uh, second razor, second shave I did was very, very good. Anyhow, I had a couple of uh, a couple of little weepers here of some kind here, uh, or something that was there. And the reason why I use this razor is because on a scale of one to five for aggression, it's a two point five, so it's a nice mild razor, and it didn't disturb uh, that whatever was on my face, and uh, really did a nice job of not disturbing it, not irritating it any further, that sort of thing. Now, in looking for something uh, as part of my post-shave routine that I can apply to kind of allow that to heal, I found this, and I'm gonna pass it on to you if you have sensitive skin or if you have problems with ingrown hairs or weepers for during your shave routine. I found Aqua Velva Sensitive 5-in-1. This really worked well, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's just about all healed up and I'm just having some great shaves without having to worry about this. And I'm using this as a spot treatment, you know, post shave after I've applied everything and then maybe, oh, half an hour later, I'll apply some of this. Uh, but it's uh, non-burning, all day moisture, helps prevent bumps, uh, soothes redness, helps fight ingrown hairs. It's lightly scented and it has a very similar scent to the classic Aqua Velva. Uh, so if you're using Aqua Velva, this is, a, this is really a, a good a product that will complement that in, in your shave routine. So I'm just passing this on to you. Uh, I've had it for a while, and I've been using it on and off, and I thought, well, here's a really good test, and it worked really well. Where this came from, I don't know. I have a, an insect bite here on my wrist and another one over here, and I'm thinking maybe it's just a couple of insect bites. But uh, whatever it was, this seemed to... Uh, to help, I'm thinking it's probably a couple of a uh, couple of weepers that I that maybe I came about because either the either I was using a a a, a, a dud of a blade uh, that maybe one of those bargain blades I use really wasn't uh, honed correctly and sharpened correctly and the edge was no good, or maybe the razor I was using was um, a little too aggressive for me. 
uh, or I don't know. It could be it could be anything. Uh, I'm not sure. It didn't develop directly after a shave. It developed maybe a day or two later. I noticed it. So that uh, so I just wanted to tell you that this worked really really well. Aqua Velva Sensitive Five in One. So you might want to check it out at your local big box store or online. If uh, Amazon has it, I will link to it via Amazon so you can so you can get some. And I, I like it a lot. It really it works really really well. Okay, let's get some more questions here. Uh, G Dubose, D U B O S, uh, Greg D. Also, that goes by G Dubose and Greg D. Well, anyhow, Greg writes, "Dear Mr. Zeradi, do you still towel dry your Allen block since using the dry dock system? Thank you for your suggestion on trying Clubman Pinot aftershave. It has a very good scent and similar qualities to my favorite Avon Wild Country, which sadly seems to have been discontinued." The best part is, is that I was able to walk into my local Sally's Beauty Supply and purchase a 12.5 ounce bottle for $7.29. I also picked up a plastic hair coloring mixing bowl for under $3 that's worked well as a lathering bowl for me. Uh, finally, while you still remain my favorite wet shaver on YouTube, I do find myself fast forwarding your video at times since they have increased in length. Thanks for your replies to my questions and keep up the good work. Greg D. Well, yeah, he's also responding to whether my videos are too long or too short. It's great that you can fast forward through them. I mean, that's that's fine. Uh, I think now in the future, I'm going to be doing some more dissolves, not showing the toweling off my face as much, maybe not showing cleaning the brush as much. Uh, at one time, I was also speeding up uh, the second pass. If I was doing a three pass shave, I would speed up the second pass to kind of move things along. So yes, I'd like to see the videos get a little, the shaving videos get a little more condensed, not to go to 35 minutes or so, just bring them down a little bit. And hopefully I can do that. And at the same time, uh, bring you the, uh, the shave, the new product I'm talking about, move things along in a in a, in a nicely paced fashion so it doesn't drag, that sort of thing. Uh, now, uh, regarding the dry dock system, no, I don't towel dry this at all. I mean, I love this thing. This is just, it's like a, it's like a tray sponge. It has all these openings where a lot, where the air can just, look at that, see that? Where the air can just, uh, just flow right through. Uh, I'll take the Allen block and I'll give it maybe a shake or two, not even, and I'll just put it in there like that. And by the next day, it's completely dry and ready to go. And this works really, really well. Now, prior to using this system, I did have, I uh, was using the uh, Osma album blocks, which are nice. Uh, not as large as the one you get from Phoenix Shaving. The one from Phoenix Shaving, let me show you, is, uh, <laughs> I think this is like less than $5, I think, or, or $5. This is a great price for this. And I think it comes with a non-slip grip. Uh, and this is, I think, maybe eight bucks, nine bucks, something like that. And you can see the difference in size. I mean, you know, I like this has more surface area, more coverage, so you can run around your face a little more quickly and, and it gives a really, really nice result. They're both good. It all depends on what you want. But really, I like the dry dock system like this. And prior to using the dry dock system, yes, I would towel off and dry my Allen block and I would put it in a plastic dish like this and it would be ready for the next day. Since using the dry dock system, no, I don't, I don't towel it off at all, I don't. Now, regarding Avon, right around this time last year, they brought back the Wild Country Splash. And uh, it, I would say, you know, keep an eye out on their website because here it is, brand new. I bought this last year, I bought about three bottles of this. There it is, brand new, Wild Country, right there. I know you can find this in new old stock on eBay and that sort of thing. But I bought three bottles, and uh, you know I'm glad I did. And yes, it is in the same ballpark as Pinot Clubman. It really is, um, and I like both of them. I like this, and I also like the Pinot Clubman. It just turns out that somebody gave me a bottle of Wild Country years and years and years and years ago, and when I came back to the traditional wet shave, I pulled it out, and I was just blown away at how wonderful it was also found out, in my opinion, that it is similar to Pinot Clubman, which is why when I'm using Clubman, uh, I'll use the Wild Country Aftershave Balm uh, as a balm upstairs because it, they cooperate with one another. 
They're in the same ballpark, just a different seating section, so to speak. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled to the Avon website because last year they brought it back and uh, I went up there immediately. It was in October of 2019. I went up there immediately and I bought three bottles. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't buy a half dozen. So keep an eye out on the, on the uh, Avon uh, website. And uh, you know they very well may, could bring it back. I mean, no promises, they could bring it back, I don't know. But uh, I'm sure that there are some bottles out there that folks are selling that uh, you know perhaps they purchased it last year and they set it aside and it's gonna be a little more expensive than what you would buy from Avon, obviously. But uh, you know, it's out there and um, it's, it's good stuff, I like it a lot. They also sell a matching cologne uh, for well, which is very, very good, good. So uh, I also have that, don't have it here on the table, but I do have that and it's really, really very, very good. Okay, hang on, I'll go get it, hang on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes I, you know, forget to put some of this stuff out. Okay, so you have the Wild Country uh, cologne here and it's got a, uh, got a little spray applicator there like that. And so you have the aftershave, the cologne, and also the, uh, the balm. Really nice line, and I agree. Uh, I like the aftershave splash. I don't like that it's not always available. I think it's a very good product, and I hope Avon sees this. And they bring this back again this fall, this October, uh, sooner than that. And they keep it up there a lot longer because I think there is a demand for this product out there. All right, thanks very much for that, Greg. I really do appreciate the question. Okay, Supernova wrote, great Monday morning mailbag video. Have you tried the razor pit for cleaning cartridges? They claim it increases the lifespan of the razor cartridge much better than using Owen's finger. Also tried Dickinson's Witch Hazel with 14% alcohol. Great stuff, although the natural scent might not be for everybody. Yeah, well, we've discussed that. The natural scent might not be for you, but uh, it's Witch Hazel is a good product. That's why they have the scented Witch Hazels out there, I guess. But regarding the, uh, the razor pit, I'll link that product below. It's, uh, it's, it is a cleaning system where you're running the, uh, you get your cartridge razor and you're running it back and forth to actually, I guess, hone the blades, uh, you know, prolong or lengthen the lifespan uh, of, of the uh, cartridges. Uh, Supernova is posting this in response to uh, a tip that someone gave uh, on the last Monday morning mailbag where you can use your finger just by stroking your finger downward on these blades, not in the direction where it shaves, but in the direction where you're not gonna cut yourself and just kind of uh, loosen up some of the debris that might be in between those blades there. Uh, so the razor pit is some sort of a stone or a block or something. I'll link it below where you're actually using a little bit of shaving cream and uh, actually, I guess, polishing the blades in order to lengthen the lifespan of the cartridge. Whether, whether it works or not, I don't know. I'm just passing it along for those of you out there who use cartridges and uh, maybe are looking for something to um, you know, help cut the cost because these little guys can be quite expensive in the long run. Um, okay, thanks very much for that, uh, Supernova. I really do appreciate it. Okay, and wrapping up, I got a great question here from James Lindsay who wrote, Good morning, Mark. Hope you're keeping well on this beautiful morning. Really like the Astra blades, but the glue is so bad that it's hard to get off my razors, especially the vintage razors. What's the purpose of the glue? Now, I'm putting this out there to viewers. I have an answer, but I don't know if it's the definitive answer. This is what I've heard in the past. It may be true. It may not be true. So please comment below and either confirm it or please correct me. But my understanding is the reason why these wrappers are glued to the blade is so that the blade doesn't shift within the wrapper during shipment. Because if the blade shifts within the wrapper, it dulls. That little bit of shifting within the wrapper will dull the edge of the blade, which is why they glue the wrapper to the blade. So here's a big Ben wrapper here. I got a little bit of glue right here, um, <clears throat> paper to paper. And I got a little bit right here, as you can see, right here on the blade, the wrapper to the blade. Okay, and that keeps just a little bit, just a little dot of glue. And that keeps the blade securely within the wrapper so it doesn't shift back and forth. 
and that little bit of shifting back and forth will actually dull the blade, which is why the wrapper is glued. Now, uh, if that's right, let me know. If it's wrong, let me know. Please comment below. Have you heard the same thing? This, is, this has always been my understanding as to why these blades are glued. Some blades put more glue in, <laughs> put more glue on the wrapper and the blade, and other brands don't put as much. So I think it's just a, uh, a your mileage may vary when it comes to razor brand. Some brands put more glue, some brands put a little less glue. So that's that's uh, that's what that's my understanding it there. He also writes, P.S. We must keep the people of Oregon in our prayers with a terrible tragedy. Yes, thoughts and prayers to everybody out there in Oregon, California, West Coast who are fighting those uh, wildfires out there. And a big, big thanks to all the first responders out there, police and fire, who are doing just phenomenal, phenomenal work out there. Thank you for your service. Really do appreciate it. All right, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out the Executive Shaving Company. Use the code MARK5. Uh, check out my blog, georgetune.com slash blog for my comic trip George, other cartoons, other videos like this. I'm on Facebook. Check out my Facebook page. Check out Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements for some great, great shaving gear. Really, really check out this new Diver Down Shave Soap. This scent is absolutely wonderful. And of course, the uh, aftershave cologne. You don't need a lot. It's got a great brace. It's got a wonderful kick. Beautiful, beautiful scent. Really, it's going to bring back uh, that bygone era of traditional wet shaving. I love it a lot. Also, check my Amazon product page at Amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Gerady. We'll find all the products I review on this channel. Organized and categorized. You can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this. Henry Ford, who said, before everything else, getting ready is the secret of success. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.